okay i think we are going to start soon hopefully everyone on the teams can hear as well uh, we'll start with a quick prayer thank you only father thank you for giving us this wonderful time lord bless each and every one that have come here for to glorify you lord and we are going to have this first art session bless all our hands that we're going to try all these things for it to glorify you lord and uh, continue to be with this entire session and um, protect each and every one lord and uh, whoever couldn't able to make it today bless them lord and uh, guide them with all the things that we are going to do and enjoy during this session lord in jesus name we pray amen amen okay so i think most of you might know ezekiel if not i'll give a quick intro so he used to be at blc and we used uh, yeah we've been know him for a long time actually so now and um, as you know like this whole art initiative we are doing this for the building project and um, especially like uh, we want to see how we can all learn something in a fun way uh, there are different types of arts through which we can glorify god and we thought why not we try something different and also at some point we will have an art expo at that time we want to showcase all our, the different arts that we did and that might be a way for us to do some fundraising too but as just like that we just want to have a good fellowship with each and every one and enjoy this time because art is something we all need to learn and then we should be able to get it actually so ezekiel i just came to know from facebook like he started posting some pictures looks like he's a great artist and he's been doing this for quite some time now so and he immediately said like i'm ready to come and do this for the church so i said like hey why not we start a series of things so the idea is like for the next three saturdays we will have uh, some basic art sessions so at the end of it Uh, we will get a good idea of what are all the different types of art materials that we can use and what type of skills or anything that we need to develop further this will help a lot so use this session and get to know all the details and we ezekiel will be sending more details through whatsapp as well so that will be a good way to uh, check as well and this is a great way for the kids to get involved and just encourage your kids enjoy as a family especially during the holiday season just spend some time and see what all the ways we can glorify god through this art and there are different types of art we are planning to so ezekiel will be teaching today like several types and also we are planning to do some ai art which a lot of folks have interest so we will have some session around it and we also plan to have some sessions on crocheting as well so in the future we will do all that but for uh, the next 3 weeks uh, we will focus more on painting different types of painting and stuff so i'll quickly hand it over to ezekiel and ezekiel will start uh, with the great work that he's been doing so yeah i think over to ezekiel then thank, thank you. you thank you deva uh good evening all i'm sure you know my name uh, ezekiel uh, isaiah so we'll just get started with this introduction okay so as you can see i've got some couple of points uh, that i plan to cover uh, one thing is just the basics of drawing right and the second is from the drawing materials the tools even the surface we will have a fun project a uh, fun project one fun project two and then the question is can we reach out to others right through art with the gospel itself and which can we followed by questions uh, you can post the questions online i hope we'll be able to answer them so quick introduction uh, this is my family uh, my wife's name is sonia uh we have been married uh, 12 years um and my three uh, beautiful children and naughty kids too right so that is joshua uh he is in 6th ethan he is in 4th and sharon uh she is in 3rd grade at all um so i am kind of active so i have uh, been their soccer coach from last 2 years uh i've been managing both the teams uh you know for my son ethan and joshua uh this year it was just ethan itself so it's it's just a great sport um also i also lead the kids ministry in the other church uh we have got around 40 to 40 to 50 kids and uh it's just a great way to kind of you know uh kind of minister to the kids there itself uh yep audio issue going on okay so for now i'll just keep this audio so hope uh, this i is it good no okay and uh i actually work in it too so uh it's kind of a busy schedule right as a dad of three kids uh you know being a soccer dad and uh 
And I also love running. So if you could see the picture, this is my 14th full marathon that I ran this year. Uh, so it's kind of busy, I think, for me. Uh, the weekends are more busier than the weekdays. Um, so they were actually asked me to come and give an, an introduction to the artwork uh, that I have done, as you have you know, seen it in the last couple of days. They were we good? Okay. Okay. To, to start with, you know, I started uh, painting or drawing when I was in second or third grade itself. You can join us here. And uh, my mom, what she did was that as a kid itself, uh, she brought me some, uh, you know, paintings which I can basically draw on the, let's say, some cloth itself. And uh, so what I would do is that, you know, I would take this, uh, this, this cushion cover and I would draw some cartoon on it, and I would paint it. And it was such, such a, a kind of a pride moment for my parents just to let them know, OK, my son has drawn this. Uh, and I remember that you know there was some cushion cover. I messed it up. I covered it with multiple colors. And when I asked my friends, you know, which is your best art? And they said, hey, the one that you messed up, which has got more colors, seems to be much more beautiful. So this is what I came to know about art. You know, there is nothing like mess up, right? You can always have multiple colors. You can always have layers on it. Um, well, you know, as usual, I think most of our stories, right? When we are in eighth, ninth grade, tenth grade, uh, we pass out. Uh, this college, uh, you know, you need to do your bachelor's. Do you need to do your master's? Uh, once you finish your studies, uh, the next expectation is your job. Once you get your job, you know, it's the next eventual thing is that, that, that you get um, um, you know, uh, married. And I found my partner 12 years back. That's, that's in Sonia. And, uh, and also what happened is that you know, once you are kind of married, the next expectation is the children. Now, for me, it's kid one, kid two, kid three. It's like the kid cube for me. you know. So uh, being blessed with three kids, just busy with life. Uh, I never touched art. I never. You know, even spend time in painting, drawing, even in cartoons also. So, but it so happened in 2020, right? Uh, uh, God was actually, you know, moving in me, and uh, he was showing me something different. He said, you know, you need to expand your mindset. And, uh, you know, God was leading. He said, you know, I know you're part of a certain technology. You need to expand into something different. And I said, hey, you know what? Let me just start doing that. And I was praying. I know this was something different uh, from all the years that, that I was in. And I was trying to get into something new, you know, new, new uh, let's say the cloud-based studies, uh, even uh, the new, something new I was trying. And God was expanding my mind to absorb more things. And finally, I think in that, during that absorption of the new things, I think there's something which came up was to be, you know, Hey, I thought, you know, hey, I used to draw well, you know, so many years back. So God gave me that spirit of, you know, of to draw well or, you know, just to just to be creative enough. Well, uh, also one more thing, you know, when God says get into something new, you need to be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just so happened that because of my interest in some new technologies and art, uh, I was I moved into different teams. You know, they had an interview. They they, they kind of selected me. Uh, things fine, and when I and you know, in a in a span of a weeks itself, I found that my pre if if I wouldn't have moved out from my previous uh, group, my job would have been lost, you know, and that's where I was like thanking God. I said, God, thank you so much for moving in me to explore something new which I was not comfortable with, and one thing that I knew was that you know, painting or drawing was something even new to me, so. Uh, it just like you know, it just struck me that hey, let me just pick up something and let me maybe uh, you know draw, draw some cartoons as such. Uh, so I started using the crayons, and believe me, the crayons that we have is absolutely no good. And I and I started researching, and on the research they said, hey, you know what? There is something called the oil-based crayons, which you can blend really well. It looks like crayons, but these are different crayons itself. And I said, hey, you know what? Let me start exploring. And I just started uh, you know, drawing itself. So uh, I'm just going to share some of my art. Uh, these are all the, uh, this was all drawn on the crayons itself. And uh, this was just the initial step of getting into the artwork. And so, th so these are some things. I know the first artwork, I think I named it as the gift. 
the best thing that you can ever do is to gift someone something very special. Uh, the other is just the walk, and the, the third is like you know a house in the woods. So these are all uh, made in the crayons itself. Uh, this one, uh, the, the, the first thing that you see, I know it's a little bit stretched. It's basically uh, kind of a walkway uh, with some flowers. Uh, there's a house in the forest. And the third art I basically named as the weight. So the unique thing about the third is that you can reverse it, and you can still see that it makes sense that someone is waiting. Uh, this one is something special because uh, like a lot of people appreciated the, the first piece and also the, the, and the second piece, also the cross. Uh, I remember making this cross during an Easter time. Uh, so, so these are some specific things uh, that I started uh, drawing and I started looking into. Uh, and, and I started posting on the Facebook and, and, I, and I received like you know, a lot of, uh, you know, lot, of, lot of people said, "Hey, you need to." Uh, get into this art. You're doing such a great job. And they said, "Hey, do you even sell art?" I said, "Not yet. Not as of yet." Uh, but you know, but 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 all the kind of comments that I received were kind of you know, they said, "Hey, go ahead. You need to do something more." So so these are some some pieces that I actually made. Uh, uh, and the second piece is something you know, with the downtown where the traffic is moving. Uh, and finally, the third is the that's a sunrise. Now remember that all these were made in, on the crayons itself and on a piece of paper. And even this one, uh, that's the rainfall and the, and the couple walking in the, you know, in the park on, on, on a, a kind of a maybe wet day, uh, and the rainy days and the, kind of the, even, even the water drops. You know, coincidentally, all these three arts, I just placed it together even without thinking. But when I started reviewing all the slides, I said, hey, you know what? I think I just made all these pieces, which has got some sprinkles of water on it. Uh, I put it as one slide itself. Uh, and finally, I started slowly in these uh, art pieces. I started exploring a little bit of uh, getting into the painting, uh, but these paints were still on, on paper itself. Now, the difference that I saw was uh, that when you start painting on a piece of paper, it kind of bends. And uh, that is what made me to start thinking that I need to explore something new, something different. Um, and so here is the thing, right? Um, now what happens is that whenever you think something different, you know, you, you kind of think, OK, is it going to work or is it going to fail? And uh, I was very nervous in terms of you know, going you know, beyond the paper, uh, that material itself. Uh, one thing that I've uh, seen is that, you know, especially uh, when I when I especially draw the pieces of art and I share it with my children, it's just that the face glows, you know. So that's the best uh, kind of feedback that I receive. So uh, I was talking about the next step was uh, going into the canvas part. Now this is my first canvas piece that I ever did, and I was kind of nervous even to go into the market and even buy a canvas, you know. I was like, I'm sure I'm going to fail. I don't even know the texture. I don't even know how the paints are going to fall on this new canvas kind of a material. Uh, but I said, you know what? I need to step out. I need to step out from, from this comfort zone that I was using the paper. And I said, you know, let me just step out and do something very different. Uh, believe me, this came out well, because when I showed it to my family, they're like, wow. You know, this was the first canvas piece that ever in our house was ever made like that. So they said, you need to you know, go beyond that, too. Uh, then I started uh, looking into the different art pieces. Now, uh, this is the fall color uh, art piece that I've drawn. Uh, this was something very, uh, very different. I thought it's going to be an easy work. I know there was a question that was asked last time. You know, that when do I draw the branches? Do I draw after I, I, I draw the leaves, or I put the branch and then I put the leaves on it? And I said, you know what? You need to attend the session to even know that. So I don't know if that person is there on the, you know, on the session or not. But I'm sure you know we will try, we'll try to attempt to draw this art maybe in the next one or two weeks. Uh, the second piece that you see is uh, is kind of a fun project that I did uh, with my you know Sharon, and uh, we just said, hey, you know what? This is something different. Let's just let's just explore this. Um, so today's one of the fun activities would be is to recreate the second piece, and that's going to be the unique masterpiece because the way we make it, no one else can. It. No one else can copy it because th that is the unique way of this art itself. And I can challenge you that. Uh, 
this one is again uh, kind of a fall color. Uh, this took me a long time to make it. You know, with all the colors, I, wa I was trying to recreate. Then things were not falling in place. I said, maybe the, the tree is not looking great. The leaves are not looking great. And I had to redo it. Maybe it took me like for days together uh, even to come up with this art. You know, but as they say, right, the more challenges that you get, the end of it is much more beautiful project, right? So this was kind of the first challenging project that I did. Uh, it took a lot of my time. Uh, and finally, I was able to you know, get it done. The second one is just, just, just the building. The reason I started getting in the gold color, uh, downtown buildings is something which I feel is where the, wealth of the, the, the cities are or the countries are, right? So that is the reason I said, you know, let me just paint it with a little bit of gold and uh, try to see that. OK, these two art pieces are actually made with gold leaf. So apart from painting with the acrylic paints, uh, this is a unique material, very fragile. And uh, you need to be very patient uh, to even you know, draw with the gold leaf itself. Uh, what makes this unique was that you know, uh, I was trying to draw maybe the first time when I, when I started using the gold leaf, it was absolute mess. You know? Things sticking on your hand and all the foil and everything else falling through. Uh, but then I said, you know, hey, you need to be patient with some things. You cannot rush through it, right? Uh, I had to be patient, uh, and I said, okay, let me let me take my time to even paint this. Now, these two art pieces were actually gifts uh, from my side. Uh, the first piece was a gift, uh, you know, to the person who was teaching music to our children in, in the in the other church that I go to. Uh, and I just wanted to appreciate him for the work that he was doing because uh, he was also teaching, uh, you know, some of the senior group of kids, and he was doing a great job. And I said, hey, you know what? Uh, the best way that you can actually appreciate someone is to spend some time and draw something and, you know, present it to them. Uh, the second also was a gift. Uh, this was a lady who taught our children in the quiz, and, you know, our kids did exceedingly well for the quiz when they participated. So these were just the gifts, you know, that I thought... Uh, the best way, I mean, you can go to the market, buy, pick up something, and uh, you can just gift. But then when you take time and when you really spend time to make it, and you can actually write some kind of memory verse, you can customize it, uh, you know, you can do multiple things at home itself. And uh, believe me, uh, these artworks uh, definitely came uh, beautifully. Uh, library uh, had put in... There was a contest, you know. They said uh, we will choose uh, bookmarks, you know, uh, and they said, you know, anyone can draw on the bookmarks. I mean, they actually gave us the wooden small pieces, and they said you paint it, and we will select the best book bookmark, and we will issue it for printing the bookmark itself. So from our family, these were the entries, and uh, Sonia had selected that spoon and the cherries. She said, you know, I want to do something very different. Uh, I want the spoon and cherry to be placed. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? So we placed the spoon and cherry, and believe me, uh, this was picked up as the best art. And they actually printed like thousands of, uh, you know, what do you say, uh, that, that, uh, uh, bookmarks uh, with the name of Sonia, you know, as, as a person who even had the idea. And I had painted that. So this was picked up as the best uh, thing. And this was actually printed. And we went back, uh, and we picked up the, those bookmarks. Too. So it was kind of a privilege. And uh, so that's the reason she said, you know, now you made me. So this is what they said. They said, uh, you can contribute back or you can pick up your art back. And I just said, you know, let's just contribute. Why do we need to have all these art back? And so they finally took all these art pieces. And then Sonia said, you know what? They took away my bookmark because you checked. You, you guys can take it back. Now you need to make me another art piece. Uh, so that's the reason I said, you know, let me just make this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, spoon and cherry over here. Uh, and this is what, and this took me like, you know, maybe uh, at least a week uh, because I just had to think and rethink, uh, especially the background. Uh, and there is no image on the internet which exists which has got a full reflection as such with this kind of a background. So uh, I, I mean, I literally had to think out of the box uh, just to paint this. And this took me like, you know, weeks together. And, this art was already ready, and then I was contemplating. I said, you know, something is not right with the, with the whole reflection. So again, I had to redo it and redo it, and then finally, this was the final image. Uh, you know, uh, what happens is that sometimes you just want to 
uh, look right. If something is not right, you know if something is not right. So you just had to correct it. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, hard work. Uh, this was so. This was a painting. Uh, so the original painting on it was some kind of a moon and some reflection of the moon. And whenever I would sit there, I said, oh, I hate that painting. You know, for some reason that that is not my best piece. So one morning I just got up. I just painted this black and I said, you know what? Let me just draw this piece. And uh, this came out pretty well uh, because my second son was asking, Dad, can you give me this? I said, where do you want to keep it? He said, when I grow up, I can keep it in my house. I said, OK, <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> but, this, but this was the art piece. Now, here is what happens, you know. Uh, from my, from, from, from my uh, you know, eyesight, I see that maybe something is really bad. And the children are asking, where is that moon thing? I said, I somehow hated it, guys. They said, no, we want the moon thing back. So I have to redraw it maybe some other time. Uh, this was an art uh, I do remember. Uh, it just took me an hour. Uh, but I remember that you know whenever we have uh, family and friends home, uh, they say that this is the best art that you have ever done was this one. So, and I don't know you know I mean like what is outstanding in this? But uh, I see that a lot of people appreciate it because I was in the church uh, I think and someone said hey from all the paintings I think this is one of the really one of the best art pieces that you have drawn. So, uh, okay and. Uh, you know, you talk about uh, something which is incomplete art, right? So this is kind of an incomplete art for, from my side. Uh, I have drawn and redrawn, and, and I'm trying to see different kind of scenarios that I can draw. And I, and I finally said, OK, I'm tired of you know, guessing. Let me just put it and frame it, OK? So if you think that you've got any better ideas for to finish it, please do let me know. Uh, <laughs> I can try to implement this across. So uh, going to the next uh, part, you know, uh, this is something that uh, the first piece is something that uh, I had drawn it uh, for a pastor of the other church, uh, and we kind of gifted him. The other part is uh, the family, that the, that the last is the family thing. Uh, I just thought that, you know, we can just represent our family over there uh, in, the, in the form of the art itself. Now, if you see... Uh, all these art pieces, I think that the last one is kind of a bigger kind of a canvas. Uh, so it takes a lot of time uh, to even think and rethink of the various uh, colors uh, that you plan to move across. OK, uh, so that's pretty much about me, I think, from the artwork that I've drawn. There are other artworks which are, I think, which are already present here. Um, and as I said, I try to explore something new. Uh, there are some art pieces which are challenging. Uh, some art pieces which just come straight forward. Uh, and I believe, you know, and also I'll tell you one story. So what happened was uh, early this year, around the month of February, right, uh, my work quadrupled, doubled, tripled. Uh, there was a very critical project that, which was coming online. And uh, some of my senior folks in my project, you know, one had, had gone to India um, and the other one was on a break. Uh, so the whole uh, the whole project uh, part of it came on me, uh, and February 16th happens to be our 12th anniversary, and that was a day that I was working like crazy, you know, like on 15th, on 14th, I was working like crazy, and I told Sonia that you know I'm sorry, I have got no plans for the anniversary because I have to get back to work. It's like crazy. I've got senior directors, VPs, they're all looking into the work that we are doing. So, and we and we cannot miss this piece, right? Um, she somehow understood, but then she was like, OK, all the work comes during my anniversary, during my birthdays, everything. It could have waited any other time, but everything comes only on this day. I said, I'm so sorry for that. So one thing that happens is that, you know, so on 16th morning, I kind of got, uh, got up early. I spent some time, made a, made a beautiful art. I, I shouldn't you know, com com uh, say good things uh, you know, about, the, about these art pieces. So anyways, I made a painting. And I said, hey, Sonia, I'm just dedicating this to you. And this is to wish you for, our, for, the, for the anniversary. Uh, anyways, I didn't wake her up. I just kept that art, and I went back to work. I know that she would be angry because the whole day I would be working. But then when she saw the art, you know, there was a change in heart. <laughs> so there was biryani for the dinner that we had. <laughs> so I tell you guys, you know what? It's good things when you learn how to draw or learn you know, to, to, be, to be kind of something creative itself. So. And one thing that someone told me, I think it was Deva who told me, they said, it's not the, the price that you keep on the gift, it's the amount of time that you spend on the gift to think about the person whom you're gifting, right? So just that itself. I know 
that art took me maybe like half an hour or even maybe 45 minutes. Uh, but that definitely touched uh, Sonia's heart. So I was kind of grateful for that. Uh, the other things that, let us just get back to the basics of drawing, right? So one thing, and especially I think for the kids also, the, the basics of drawing is that you need to draw, right? You need to step out and you need to start drawing. Uh, I, would, I would like to ask you one question, you know, and also maybe the people who are online. Who can draw? You know, I see it's only the young kids and there's one adult who's, and two adults who are putting their hands up, but believe me, all the adults, all their hands are down, you know. This is surprising because, you know, there was uh, one professor who went to maybe a third grade or a fourth grade class, and he, and he asked the kids, who can draw? And believe me, the entire class lifted their hands. And when he, when, when he went to an adult's group and he said, who can draw? And from that thousand people, maybe two hands he could see, you know. <laughs> and he was like wondering what happens between the fourth grade to the adulthood, right? So, but let's, let's just talk about the basics. Uh, if you see, there are three images over here. The first thing, you know, for, as an artist that I've learned is this. When God made this world, right, he didn't keep a part of it as white and gray. He said, you know, he didn't say, hey, you know what, my coloring system went, went off or I'm just not in the mood of coloring this piece. Uh, so if God has made everything colorful and everything, you know, has different patterns, why do we miss out the drawing piece, right? Why do we have a lot of whites in our drawing? The first part, I think the first piece of advice, especially the young kids, if you're painting, if you're picking up painting, ensure that you paint the entire picture. Don't leave any place blank, right? Um, and I know, you know, as a kid, if, if someone would ask us, and I don't know if this was an Indian thing or what, but if you say, hey, draw an art, you know, we all would say, you know what, this is mountain. <laughs> and then they say, this is my house. And these are the birds, right? These are the birds, they'll say, these are the birds. And then we say, where do we plant, right? We say, they used to say, you know, this, these are the places where the plant is. And I still remember my fourth grade teacher said, if you draw the plant ways like that, do you think it's going to stand straight or it's going to fall, right? <laughs> so this was a basic painting that we used to all draw. So, you know, that is what I kind of made me think, you know, why do we, why do we draw like this? And why, does, why do all the birds like that? Why, do, why are the mountains like that, right? So there has to be a change of thought. Uh, the, also, when you see between these three pictures, right, the third picture has more texture, right, has got more color itself. Something that I've also learned is, uh, you know, uh, at any age, you know, the kids, especially if you're painting or drawing, especially drawing, let's say if you're uh, taking, uh, you know, have, you have a picture and you want to color it. So one thing that I've learned is that please don't use a sketch pen. So let's say that, if this is maybe let's say this is a this is a car that you have right that you have drawn please don't use a sketch pen to fill this it looks atrocious right so what you do is that you make an outline maybe you use a use a black and make an outline but then you want to use the color let's say you have a red color car i would say outline this car with a red red sketch pen right? Outline this car with a red sketch pen, and then use some kind of coloring pencils to fill in, right? And when you fill in with the color pencils or crayons, uh, what happens is that the texture doesn't come out really well. So what I would always advise, and what I personally do is that I tear out a small piece of paper, and I just rub it across, right? Which ensures that you know, you have the colors are all well, you know, pasted across the, the texture itself, right? Or the blending or, or the concept of blending is there. A lot of times our crayons, the kind of quality of crayons that we use may not have the blending power, but you can use a piece of paper and you can just blend the colors itself, right? So these are, so these are some basic of parts. And believe me, when you're, and also when you're coloring, ensure that, you don't color over here. You color within the object itself. And I know, you know, even as you mature, even as you grow up, 
the fact is that your the, the, that coloring itself will change. Uh, and I wanted to also have maybe yeah this is this is one example uh, that we did uh, maybe for someone's project, someone's kid's project, right? So we ensure that the background is also colored. Um, we we actually cut out this Captain America shield and we pasted it there, but it kind of matches with the background itself. Uh, the other things is uh, the, the, the different kind of material that we can actually use. Uh, the fact is that uh, these, as I said, right, these, are, these look like normal crayons, uh, but these are like the oil pastel crayons itself. Uh, believe me, if you want to you know, ensure that your uh, drawing looks awesome, uh, I would suggest use this oil pastel. The, you know, I think these are like maybe $5 or something, but you would be getting in pretty much every store. Also ensure that you know once you uh, once you blend the colors, uh, use some some kind of piece of paper just to blend it across. Uh, there are different ways, you know. I think color pencils. Uh, if you use these color pencils a lot, believe me, there are some beautiful art pieces that can ever be made from these color pencils. Uh, so you you can be patient. You know, blend the colors. Ensure that the colors are all covered. The paper is all covered across. The third is definitely those sketch pens or the markers. Uh, markers, again, I would definitely highly suggest, please don't use it to fill in the object. Uh, just use it to outline it and fill in that color, maybe with some crayons or anything else which is matching that specific color itself. Uh, the final thing, I think these, uh, you know, the, that those those are the colors that we can actually use. Even some are based uh, uh, water-based colors. I'm sorry, I'm searching something over here. So they can also be used, but ensure that when you use it, uh, you have a proper material. Uh, let me just uh, let me just check if I've got. It. So you do get some books which can take in the watercolors. Uh, there are you know very specifically they mention it. Uh, try painting on these watercolors uh, or on this material because the, the texture of the paper is still very stable uh, and, it, and it doesn't you know, fold or it doesn't uh, tear. So uh, these are the you know, things that we can use uh, for some of the materials itself. Um, again, I tell you, you know, if you are interested or if your kid is interested, buy them a sketchbook, you know, uh, where they can actually put in all their arts, you know. And I tell you, there are some, you know, uh, folks that I know they have kept this uh, sketchbooks or these art books for years to come, and they have even shown to their kids, saying that, hey, this is what your dad was drawing or your granddad was drawing. So I tell you, if your children are interested, uh, let them just not draw on some piece of paper, and the, and these and these piece of papers will be flying across the whole house, and finally it is thrown out, right? So ensure that you know to value your children's uh, children's art or even your art also when you spend so many hours to draw. Uh, ensure that you have a book of records. The other things are the different materials. Um, if you are into painting, you can definitely have that you know that painting board, uh, which is which is more more kind of comfortable. Something like this over here in our church. Um, so yeah, these are the materials that you can definitely use. Uh, yeah. So what I've got over here is. So these are some of the acrylic paintings, uh, paints that I actually use. Um, yeah, these are these are these are some specific couple of things that I've that I've been using. So one thing that for me was transitioning from a normal uh, brush was the palette knife. You know, so the palette knives are very different world itself. It's not like a simple thing as you paint, uh, but palette knives is something where you can. Uh, draw some something like a mountain like a texture when you when you put the paint when you when you just paint it across maybe I can just show you to you uh, maybe the next uh, you know the, that's the next week but you can get a beautiful texture with the palette knives now there are different palette knives different sizes for the palette knives uh, some are just used to maybe you know just add on colors uh, some are used to stress the colors but the output of it is beautiful the you know it is like beyond uh, even just painting with a with a normal brush, I think every kind of a art or utility has uh, different uh, you know need, and there's a different beauty uh, attached to these uh, you know tools itself. A lot of times, I think what we have also used, uh, and some of the cheaper options, especially for the kids, instead of using a brush, 
is this kind of a brush with the foam. Uh, especially for the kids, you know, you want to uh, expand the texture or you want to, you know, uh, like, you know, merge or even blend different colors. Uh, this would be also a greater option uh, to use as such. Okay, uh, so we are done with the materials, the textures. Okay, now, one thing is there, and, and I can guarantee you, right, so after this workshop is over, I'm sure that everyone in this room can draw, and I hope everyone online can draw. Uh, I, can, I can kind of guarantee you that, but let's say you, you have not drawn it, and you cannot draw after the session. Believe me, uh, Deva will pay you $100 for that, right? <laughs> sorry, Deva, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, to, to start with, right, uh, okay, who's got the papers and markers with them? Okay. So, you know, guys, this was an experiment that was done, and also I think there are some models who are sitting at the back row. You might want to take a piece of paper, and so I'm taking a challenge that, you know, anyone or everyone can draw, right? So let's... So I think what's happening in the church right now is that we are trying to convince the adults that, you know, you need to take on the sketch pen and take a piece of paper and you can draw. So if you can see, if you want to draw some of these images like this, right? So maybe you, the first step is to actually take a piece of paper and a pencil. And let's just follow the instruction. Let's see. Okay. Who's ready right now? Okay, I see all the kids' hands. And yep, I can see. Adults, do you have, Sonia, you can take a piece of paper and a sketch pen. <laughs> okay, you guys can follow me? Okay, let's see. And let's, and actually let's have a contest too between different tables, okay? Let me see who can get the best art. And people who are online, you know, you can actually follow it. So let's see. So here is something that I'm drawing, okay? Okay, who's ready? Who can draw who can draw the image of a dog the fastest way? Who can draw the image of a dog the fastest way? No? Okay. Let me tell you. You first take a U and draw a line. And you take a B and a B and then you draw a circle over here, and then you draw the eyes, and that becomes your dog. Oh, you know what? Let me, let me change it as a black marker. Let's see. I'm so sorry for that. OK. So this, is, this is like a simple U. And I draw one line in between. And I take a form of a B and a B, and I draw the eyes, and I draw the nose. I just color the nose like this, so there's a shine. And I draw a dog like that, who's sitting down. OK, the other, the other famous, uh, one of the cartoon characters that uh, I love drawing was uh, Mickey Mouse. Now, let, let me start talking about the basics. So they say that. Right? Uh, when the cavemen started drawing, they just drew scribbles itself. They didn't have any communication, right? They didn't have anything to talk, but they could only draw scribbles. So let's see if you guys can follow me. And let's, let's see. OK, so first, you draw this maybe a reversed U at an angle. You're drawing, right? And then. We draw two sixes over here and over here, right? And then we draw the hair. We draw this. We'll call this guy. Sparky, he's like looking up with his nose up like that. Hope you got the image, right? <laughs> no, no, no. 
Let me see. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll take another stab at drawing, okay? I draw the nose. There are two sixes. Two sixes, right? This is the year. It's the same thing. I just wanted to ensure that you're drawing the same thing. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, let me see. <laughs> wow, Scott, that is awesome, Scott. That looks that looks awesome. Cool. Asha, awesome. Yep, kids. Kids, you got competition there. Someone is really competing against you guys, okay? And I see that's a that's a beautiful heart. Yeah, beautiful dog, Seth. Nice, Josh. Okay. Yes, Ethan. I will get back to you that, Ethan. <laughs> that's a great question, but I'll get back to you. Okay. Let's let's draw another way, right? So we will draw maybe a reverse seven. Right? And then we draw two sixes. And then we draw this. That's a smile. And then we change the texture. It's not a sheep, it's, it's a lady who's smiling. <laughs> Just confirming it, guys. It's a lady who's smiling, it's not a sheep. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good observation, Ravi. It could be an old lady, too. <laughs> right? OK. OK. You guys can see this image? OK. Let's. Nice. That, that's a great try. Wow. That is awesome. Good job, Josh. Good job. Nice. Very nice, Seth. Wow. Cool. OK. We've got some amazing artists over here. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Now, what, what did I change, right? The eyes are the same. The nose is different, right? But everything else is the same. The hair texture is different. But everything is the same, right? Let me let me just draw another image. Let's see. So we have got a nose. Now instead of we have been drawing sixes as the eyes, let's draw something different in the eyes, right? And this guy's looking up with some disappointment. Just to describe the image, this is again not a sheep, not a cow, not a dog. It's a, <laughs> it's a human being who's looking up. OK. OK. Let's, let's see this. You know, this is, the, this is the reaction that I get when I tell all the adults to draw. So this is the reaction, OK? Oops. OK, the paper is running out. Let me just check if, if I can reuse the paper material. Okay.
Any guesses? What is that? Exactly, you got it right. Someone is actually looking up, opening his mouth and crying. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, this is the, these are the tears. And that's the nose. <laughs> okay, let's see. The competition is still on. Okay, can I see, can I see your drawings on that? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a disappointment face. Those are awesome drawings. I think that table is winning. Good job, Seth. Okay, ladies, how about you? You didn't do that because you didn't understand that? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's the true image of the adults over here. Okay. The other way is this. You know, okay, guess this. You'll get bonus points if you guess who is this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Right. You know what? Wasn't this a fun project, right? So I asked a question to most of the adults, and they, and they said they have never drawn. They never picked up a paper. They never even drew image for so many years. But now I see that I see a change in some of the adults, right? So here is, so here is what you know, some of the learned researchers say. If you can draw a triangle, if you can draw a square, if you can draw a rectangle, and if you can draw a triangle, believe me, you can draw anything in the world, right? Right? Maybe even a circle tube. Yep, that's correct. Now, the, the reason for this exercise was not to see, you know, which, who has got the best image or the best art, Believe me, this is just the beginner art itself. But the fact is that there are so many things which are limiting us, right? Where we say, I do not draw, I've never drawn, I can never draw, but believe me, everyone can actually draw. You just have to come out from your comfort zone and just take it up and say, hey, I need to do something different. Now, this, could, this, is, this is the part of drawing that I'm talking about. There are so many aspects in our life which, you know, which hold us back, which we think, we cannot even do anything. But you know, let me tell you, unless until you come out of your comfort zone, you cannot know what God has given you as a skill sets and as gifts. So this is just an encouragement. You know, adults, kids, kids I know, kids will be jumping, you know, for doing multiple things. But I tell you, as adults, you need to try something different, and that is how you will discover the God given abilities in you. So this is this was one of the fun project and so here is one challenge, okay? So let's say that in this world, there was no talking, there were no words. And if people had to communicate only through the images, how would you do it? Picture drawing. Picture drawing, that's a great thing. Can you come on the stage? <laughs> just, just one, just, just one, just one. Just, just one, just, just one. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna make you do anything. Come on, come, come on the stage, come on the stage. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Asha, come. And Ravi, Ravi, why don't you come? No, 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 Ravi, come, 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 come. Ravi, come. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Come, come, Ravi. Not, not a big deal. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Okay. Okay, now here is the thing, right? All of a sudden, there are no words. There's no sound. There's no text. You can't even text each other. But the only way of communication was the images, right? Now... Asha, why don't you come and stand here? Ravi, why don't you come and stand here? Okay, all of Ravi, you stand here. Asha, why don't you stand there? So what happens one day is that Asha gets up and says, Ravi, I need coffee. Not just coffee. I need hot coffee. Or you say tea. Okay. Or just not tea, hot tea. So Asha, how will you tell Ravi? Okay. And then Asha says, you know what? I don't feel like eating a sandwich. I feel like eating a vada and a dosa. 
cool. Isn't that awesome? And Asha was someone that who said, I've never drawn in my life. I'm not going to touch the paper nor the pencil. OK, this is just the tea. How are you going to order the dosa and the samosas and the vadas? OK. Okay, and now sambar, just not sambar, hot sambar. Cool, isn't that awesome? <laughs> and now Ravi is going to ask, okay, where are the ingredients? How will you ask? <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's just clap for Asha and Ravi. Thank you so much. You know, I just wanted to dispel the, the common things that we always have the fears of drawing, right? Everyone can draw. And I believe, you know, Asha got the exact message. She didn't say, hey, I just need a cup of tea. She said, I need a cup of hot tea. That is what I was looking out was the fumes, right? And she said the vada and the samba too. OK. Now, can I have, uh, let's say, two kids? OK, Seth, and why don't you come? You both come in the front. OK. Now, Seth is, just imagine, Seth is new to the school, OK? And it's the same conditions applied. And Seth wants to say, where is my classroom? And he wants to ask directions. Seth, how will you ask him the directions? Like, where is the classroom? Now, this could be a library. This could be a bathroom. This could be where's your the exit the door. <laughs> where's the numbers? The numbers. Now, no communication, no text, you nothing. Could, you could speak in a hieroglyph. Egyptians. <laughs> you can write a teacher no, or something. Carlos has said numbers on this. You can't read yeah. <laughs> it. Point the chair. Cool. OK. Let's, let's give a clap for Seth, OK? So he drew the school, and he drew the classroom. OK, how will you tell him where the direction is? Okay, he got it nearly right, right? So he just showed the directions and, okay, and where is, and if I say, where is the cafeteria? Or if you just point me where the cafeteria is, how do you do it? Um, <laughs> you cannot point out like that. <laughs> you need to draw something little the food. Okay, there is there is form, some form of art, I'm sure, you know, but we all improve. But this is a pizza, actually, so that is such an awesome art, right? That is so cool. Let's just clap for them. What an, what an awesome thought, right? Okay, now I know that Pastor Stanley is there online, um, and I know that he cannot stop me anything, but let's say if Pastor Stanley was su supposed to be telling this to the church, you know, Pastor Stanley, this is just for you, okay? So he would draw. He would say, you know, let's say.
And then pastor would say, church, focus on this. That is fasting and praying. But I need to put the praying part, but he should have said, hey, this is fasting. This is how you should not be doing things. Okay. Uh, Let's see if I've got enough paper. Uh, If I can reuse this. So here is the thing, right? All the researchers, they said, the kind of learning that we do is always from the textbook. Right? We read, we read, we read. And there are times when you, you know, take a break, come back, everything that you've read just gets evaporated. So they say that if you draw images and relate, so images, right, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Now let's say if you go on some vacation and you say and you put it on the Facebook or on Twitter, oh the sun is so beautiful, the beach is so awesome, the food is so awesome, and people would just read it and they say, okay. But then just imagine you put a picture of the sunset, you put a picture of the wonderful meal that you have, you you put a picture of the beach that you have been to, what happens? People said, whoa, that is something awesome, right? Now, pictures have also said that, you know, uh, so they were a group of researchers who gave the younger kids 40 words. And they say that you, you look at the words, you remember it, and then we'll ask you maybe after a minute. And then there was a second group who, was, who were given a group of pictures, and they say, gaze at the pictures maybe for a minute, and we'll come back and we'll ask you. You know, the group who saw the pictures could remember the maximum number of pictures than the group who just read the words, right? So there's a, there's a different group. Now, you know, there was, uh, there was a kid, or I think a medical student, uh, who basically drew this? So, the, so this is the thing, right? So, the what does the arteries carry? Anyone? What is the arteries? What is the use of the arteries? Blood. But what else does it carry? Oxygen. That is correct. So, someone drew this image. You know, they just drew a cartoon. Maybe a smart artery guy, right? And then in his hand, he's carrying a briefcase, which has got O2 in it. So that's like a pictorial thing, you know, that your arteries are carrying the oxygen. Now, there are are different ways that you can have images to the stuff that you read. Uh, But I tell you, when you draw images to the things that you read, you remember it much better. Uh, You know, this thing that the, this was a process, you know, these are the set of drawings that I did for you. So there was a researcher who exactly did these kind of drawings uh, to those folks who had a stroke. And what happened was that they, these were so basic drawings that the people who had a stroke, they could still come up with some drawings. And you know, believe me, it was on the, so they were, they were supposed to be writing from the right hand, but because of the stroke, they, they cannot use, uh, I think, that the right side of the body. But what they did, they were still able to draw something with the left hand. And the doctor said, you know, now these people are just not called the, the guys who got the stroke, but they're also called the ones who can draw, right? So the drawing itself enlarges our, ima- you know, our thinking, and it just kind of relaxes. Believe me, you want to kind of de-stress yourself, just, just pick up a cartoon or something, just, just draw, uh, just doodle the, the way this, just doodle something. And believe me, you are, you know, the focus of your mind will be something different. Okay. Uh, Time to do, maybe this is kind of the other project that I have. Uh, but Deva, can we take a five minutes break and we come back? Yes. Okay. So we'll just take a five minutes break. I know I've been talking, but we'll just take a break of five minutes and we'll come back in five minutes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now I'm here. Okay. Uh, so we just want to show a quick thing about uh, some of the stuff Chloe's sister did. These are all some nice uh, Christmas decorations that we can do ourselves. So she will give a quick overview of how she did and how we can do this. Maybe in the future session, we can have her go this in detail. So anybody interested, these are like beautiful ones. I think, uh, I think we all, I think a lot of them will be excited to know like how they did it. So let's hear from Chloe on this then. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We started out with um, dolls that I ordered or got from um, the Dollar Tree. And uh, this is a Christmas ornament. You can actually hang her. I just did it with um, lace and feathers. 
Um, this is a, um, a snow globe. <laughs> and uh, this is the, a candy dish. This one's a snow globe also. I just got most of these items either online or from the dollar store and, uh, and, and did them. This is a uh, Christmas tree ornament also. And uh, let's see, a, oops, that one fell off. Thanksgiving um, ornament as well. This one is a um, snow globe as well. And coming on around the table, thank you, sweetie. This is probably my second favorite. Uh, this is a Christmas tree, and that one, it has candy in it. And over on the uh, mirror, I was uh, thinking about, I think it was Pastor May, that um, a couple of Fridays ago, he talked about, he actually showed a mirror and said that how we could reflect God's spirit in our spirits. And I just decided to write, um, to put rather, um, reflection and then the nativity scene I, I thought would be absolutely perfect. And I do have some jars left over. I have some... Um, some of the uh, other items, yeah, the glitter and the glue that uh, the kids can actually make their own snow globe. I don't have, I only have, I think it's 10 here, but uh, you can, uh, you know, have fun with the kids making their snow globes and you can put tops on them like I did or just leave it blank like my grandkids did. And uh, I also have... I think one Christmas ornament that I did not show you, I was trying to replicate some of the women dressing <laughs> with uh, their beautiful outfits. Sorry. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, we will have this maybe next week. Uh, we will give a little more time and go a little more in detail, but thank you so much, Chloe. So back to Ezekiel, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So, hi all. Uh, kids, you want to take your place? We'll get things started. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see this uh, on the, uh, the camera. So this is a uh, abstract art that I actually drew for, for the BLC Church. And uh, the question is, the question is, can we use art uh, to share the gospel, right? And believe me, uh, the art pieces that I've drawn, you know, you write some kind, you, you write some kind of a memory verse which makes the art, you know, very different. There is, there is an art piece that I've drawn for the waves. You know, just imagine if you just draw like how Moses crossed the, this, this Red Sea, right? Just draw how God was so supportive and he protected his people when they crossed this Red Sea. The other thing that I can think about is, you know, when the storm came in, in the form of a wave, right? When Jesus was sleeping in the boat. This is, this is an art that I've actually drawn. As I said, uh, this is more of an uh, abstract art. This also sometimes, you know, when I showed it to my kids this morning, they said, what is this horrendous art that you have drawn? For us, we like to see something visible, realistic. This is not our kind of an art. But I was trying to tell, hey, look at the colors, you know. And, you know, believe me, the kind of colors that I see, I know it, it looks beautiful, but also, you know, the kids, the way the kids say it, right, I don't understand it. Believe me, sometimes these colors are, you know, are kind of the way and the situation that we have in our life. Confusion. The darkness over here represents, like, you know, the times when we have so many questions, we are so much stressed. 
the sin that, you know, as Paul says, easily tries to, um, uh, you know, uh, tangle you. And we run behind the gold, the money, the green, the money, the yellow, the gold. And I tell you, there are times when we are so stressful that we ask God, where are you in this, in my life? Right? I tell you, in uh, 2019, I think so, uh, I was traveling to Hyderabad uh, with my dad. And our thing was from Chicago, I think Delhi, Delhi to Hyderabad. And I tell you, there was a season, I was so much stressed about things. Uh, and I was praying and asking God, God, how do I get these things done? You know, And there were so many thoughts that were ranging in my mind. And the least thing that I could ever think was that, can, can God even think about me in that flight among these hundreds of passengers? And I tell you, I was, I was so much stressed. And I was praying, God, give me a solution. I have no answers to that. There is no clear path forward. And I landed you know, in that place you know, with, a, with a very heavy heart. And I didn't know how things are going to work out. So as we were stepping out from the flight, uh, and we were the last uh, passengers to, to kind of get out, and there were some couple of passengers who got in Chicago. They were all the way. Uh, there was a guy who was sitting behind me with a red, you know, big hat. Um, and he was talking loudly with this, I think, with his the, passengers about our Indian chai and the Hyderabad chai. And, and I was like, thank God I'm not sitting with this guy. You know, he's so loud. I would have not have rested through the entire flight. And believe me, as we were getting down, we were the last passengers. And we never spoke a word. I never said hi. He never said hi. Uh, but I was just helping my dad out. And as he was getting down, I said, why don't you go ahead of me? And we were the last passengers. And while he was getting out, he just looked back, glanced at me. He put his hand on my shoulder. He said, you know, God is going to be with you. God said that he's going to be with you in this trip. And I was like, I never spoke to you this entire hours that we were together. And then he starts speaking in my life. Believe me, I didn't even say hi to him. He just turned back, and he started revealing so many things. And he said, God is going to be with you in this trip. You're going to see things you have never seen in your life. He never asked my name. He never asked, was, what, did, did I even believe in Jesus? But he started talking from the word of God itself. And he started blessing me in the flight. And we were holding hands and we were praying in tongues. And I tell you, you know, and I tell you, we were there. No one, you know, except I think uh, there was the, the, I think a flight steward. And she was like, okay, now we can move, we can move. But we were standing and we were praying in tongues. And I tell you, after this trip, I said, God, thank you, Lord. Even in my dark times, even in my doubting, you were always with me. You never left me, right? And I thought that I was not at all significant that you would bring your word through your servant, a complete stranger, and you blessed me through your stranger. And I was like, God, you are such an awesome God. And I could remember, you know, the same thing would have happened to all this, you know, to all, to, to, to all I think, Jesus' uh, you know, followers. When they were in the boat and when they were hit by a storm and they were so scared, they... They didn't know that Jesus was down sleeping with them, and that's, that's the reason they were so scared, right? They did not know that the person who could calm the storm was in the boat along with them, right? And that's the reason when I, when I look into this art, when I see there's so much confusion, you know, Jesus tells us that I have not left you alone. I have always been with you, even in the midst of your doubt, even in the midst of your darkness, I was always with you. Let me just check, you know, if this art can reveal something different. Uh, sorry, I'm doing this for the first time, so just bear with me, okay?
I tell you, even in the midst of desperation, even in the midst of uh, confusion, where there's so much self-doubt, and we ask, God, where are you? And God says, hey, I'm just right with you. In the midst of your struggles, in the midst of your doubts, I'm with you. Amen? Thank you so much. Uh, this is a gift to the BLC Church. This is a gift to the BLC Church. And thank you so much, Deva and Pastor Stanley, for having us over here. Uh, so we meet next week. Uh, if there is any art pieces or anything else, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll definitely, I think, message you on the WhatsApp, and uh, we will we will be in touch. But thank you so much, awesome. Deva. Yeah. Uh, do you want to quickly say like what you're going to cover next week? Any idea? So I think next week we will, as I said, we can try. We'll be trying to do some fun projects. Uh, where you know we'll be having the kids uh, do some acrylic work. Uh, we can get back to the cartoons if you want to wish to. Uh, we can get back. But there are two or three projects that are planned for the kids that we can try to attempt. Awesome. And we also have one more friend, uh, one of my friends, like Charu. She is joining online. And she will be taking a 15-minute session because she also started artwork maybe a year back. And she's going to share some of her experience next week as well. So it'll be exciting. So yeah, just bring your friends. We'll all learn together. It's going to be really fun, and uh, yeah, who knows, God will bring some great artists among us, and we'll see in the coming days. Thank you so much for attending, and also everyone online. I think we couldn't be able to have any question and answer session to this today, but we'll definitely have that next week. But yeah, anybody can come in person, always welcome, and uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.